This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hi guys, this is Ranger Rob from Central Oregon Living and Homestead. And today's a Saturday after, well, afternoon. And I wanted to talk to you about um, self-reliance. I want to talk about homesteading and also uh, living off the grid and things like that. And what I want to do is kind of talk realistically with you about it. And I think the first thing I want to bring up, which sounds funny, but age could be a factor in whether how off-grid you want to go. Uh, I'm not quite 60 yet. Uh, I get around, I don't have anything really holding me back health-wise. Uh, but it's harder than it was 20 years ago to do some stuff. And so what I see on the internet uh, a lot is uh, the thrill of homesteading and the thrill of being self-sufficient and then people going out and say I want to be off-grid and I want solar systems and generators and things like that and uh, uh, the big thing I want to talk about is is I agree with all that stuff however you got to be realistic in this day and age so we've tried to do on this channel is to show you how to be as self-reliant as possible based on where you live. Now before this Central Oregon thing, we were in Arizona and we we're in Mesa and we we're literally just outside of the big city. And we talked a lot about being self-sufficient there. Now if we look at the future and things really got bad, and let's say it was a food crisis, power outages, shit hits the fan kind of thing, uh, of course, everybody in the city, once all the resources are gone, would start working their way out and would hit the suburbs quite quickly. Um, and another realistic thing is you may hear, well, you probably heard things like, well, are you prepared to bug out? Are you <laughs> prepared to uh, uh, hit the road? Well, in, in Arizona, that would have been really stupid. First of all, we got high temperatures. Two is, if you put everything you own in a backpack and you're hiking either down the road or out in the open, you're just one big invitation of, hey, <laughs> there's a, a mobile uh, resource, let's kill him and take his stuff. And so, at my age, to bug out is not really what I am think is practical. And that's what I want to talk about with, with this uh, being self-reliant. And you don't mind me having coffee with you, I hope. In fact, grab a cup of coffee, pause the video, go get a cup of coffee, and let's talk. So Sherry and I had the opportunity to go back to Central Oregon. We used to live here in our 40s, and we did a uh, game bird farm, and our, we had teenagers then and all that. So it was really pretty easy to keep up all that stuff. But now it's just me and Sherry. And so... Uh, We've taken on a lot just here because we're actually taking over a place that it wasn't run down, but it was neglected um, just due to the, uh, her folks living here and their age and their health. Uh, they did nothing wrong. <laughs> so, um, and they knew that this place needed help. And so when we bought it, uh, luckily they also uh, sold a lot of equipment to us at the same time so we could maintain it and maybe get this back in order. So for me and Sherry, what self-reliance means prepping is uh, really watching the economy and politics right now. So as you can see, we've been doing a lot of videos about the chickens. And the reason the chickens was we wanted eggs for sure. Uh, are we doing any of this to save money from the store? Realistically, no. However, I do. I'm going to be getting better quality eggs. And if things were really, if I see the indications that we really got a problem, and I'm on the cusp on some of this stuff, and yes, while we're here, you will enjoy seeing our German Shepherd going back and forth, very curious about the chickens, and uh, uh, it's kind of funny, and we just kind of have to deal with it. But uh, uh, Belle is her name. She's just seven months old, and so uh, she, 
she might come around and <laughs> peek on the chickens a few times. So getting back to the subject of self-reliance. <clears throat> Sherry and I wanted to get away from the city. We do realize if something nearly got bad, uh, to be a lone wolf is not a smart idea. If you follow Canadian pe Prepper and many other folks, uh, you'll find that when they really discuss it, if you don't have a community, you've got a problem. <laughs> Come here, Bob. <laughs> anyway, because uh, everybody's got different talents. One person might be really good at mechanical, another one at electrical, another one knows how to grow food, things like that. So that's one of the main things we've done since we've moved here is starting to make alliances in a sense. Uh, not mentioning the fact that we're really preppers too. So Sherry and I have spent a lot of time in the last few years learning how to can, learning how to do our dehydration, how to store food. We stored a lot of water, but until, if you've watched our videos, we still have water, uh, bottled water stored, maybe 20 cases of water. But now uh, that we have a generator, what we're doing is stocking up on fuel because we have a well. And if you just saw a recent video, we just put a, uh, set up our well so we can turn on a generator and literally uh, water this entire property and uh, our house and everything and our animals. Um, we uh, don't have to leave the generator on the whole time to do that only when the need arises because we do have like about a 50 gallon tank of water that fills up in the pump house that if we're just washing dishes and do that like that we'll be fine till that tank's empty and then I have to turn on the generator again. Uh, if I'm watering it takes like four hours to water our property uh, I would probably shut off a lot of systems if it was really getting bad and just worry about the vegetable gardens. So our goal I can tell you as the kind of self-reliance that we're kind kind of teaching and uh, advocating for is get yourself a place on the grid. Why, why, why suffer without utilities and things like that? Um, but give you a place where you could, if someone came along and shut off all your utilities, could you survive? And it could come to that. Uh, so why make it hard to go to the grocery store? Why make it hard to get to a hardware store? Why uh, always having to manage your power and water? Um, why make it hard on your animals? Things like that. Uh, and get in the mode of what ifs. What if the power went out? What would you do? What if you don't have water? What would you do? What if food got sh uh, had food shortages started happening? What would you do? Uh, some of the answers to our situation is buying more freezers and a generator. And remember, even on freezers, you don't have to power them the whole time. Run them for a few hours. Get them down to cold temperature. Let them sit for uh, a half a day or a day. Put the power back on. Keep those freezers under zero uh, in freezing temperatures and preserve your food. Um, stock up. Uh, we have at least six months worth of food here. Uh, you also just saw a video of us. We just bought a quarter beef, which meant we bought another freezer. You saw that in the videos. So uh, the other thing is I have kids. They're all adults, of course. Um, and my kids are in a rat race. Your kids, too, if you're my age. They're trying to survive, feed their kids, hold their jobs. The COVID's got everything complicated. Homeschooling, they got a nightmare. So I admit, I prep and prepare for my kids, whether they like it or not. But if one of my kids uh, had troubles and they were having a hard time making ends meet, I've now got five acres for them to stay on. And also I could feed them and none of my grandkids will go hungry. Um, and I have the resources and the time to do this where my kids may not. So this is another part of our realistic homesteading. To be out in the boonies with a hundred acres 
is uh, uh, hard. It's uh, a lot of money to set up your own utilities and your own solar systems and all that kind of stuff. I, get, I will definitely have solar here in the future, but I'll segregate the power for it for the things that are important if the grid goes down. So if I put a power array in here, I want to be able to maybe run a stove, maybe uh, turn on a few lights, uh, maybe with enough conservation, run the laundry or run a hot water heater for uh, short periods of time if I was off grid. So uh, my recommendation is buying a place that is out in the country, but is modernized, that it is on the grid. And then build the, your, your homestead uh, and your self-reliance, asking yourself, what if I lose power? What if I lose water? Can, what if food shortages come? Can I grow stuff? And if I grow stuff, if the power and water goes off, can I still grow stuff? Do I have water? I've solved those problems. Um, and I'm continuing to solve more. Uh, here, our soil isn't that good. So you'll start hearing us talk a lot about um, composting. And composting uh, will give us uh, additives for our, our gardens and stuff. So we can have natural additives to our gardens even if I can't go to the store and buy uh, manure or anything I need to add to my, my gardening, I can produce my own high quality soil. Uh, once you have things like eggs, we've done all the studying that we can. We found out we can preserve eggs for up to a year using a, a dehydrated uh, a hydrated, uh, lime. And we also found we can freeze scrambled eggs. You, you don't cook them, but scramble your eggs and put them in uh, Ziploc bags, maybe four or five eggs, and put them in the freezer. Perfectly good way to preserve eggs. All you do is defrost them in water uh, in the sink. Only takes a few minutes, and you've got breakfast ready to go. So if we're going to have chickens and eggs, I don't want to waste them. So there's so much new education you'll need to get. Anything that you do is a cause and effect as far as being self-reliant. If you're gonna have chickens, how are you gonna water them? How are you going to uh, feed them? Uh, chickens are great for eating scraps. Um, I have so many things that when we're cleaning our gardens and stuff, I can throw in here and, and literally still feed my chickens even if I couldn't buy them food. So do you want to buy 20 acres out in nowhere where you, one is you may have to deal with bad, you know, weather is a big thing. The roads could be a problem. You got to have the right kind of cars and equipment. You may have to have a tractor. You, uh, you have to have the abilities to fix things and build things. Um, at my age, luckily I've got a lot of skills from over the years, but uh, someone my age, you may not want to be that uh, self-reliant. Why not get a place that's already on the grid that you can start building on from there? And if there's new skills you need to learn, hey, there's nothing more magical than YouTube. How do you think I found out about how to preserve eggs? How do you think I uh, figured out how we wanted to build this chicken hutch? It was all YouTube. People are sharing their information along with what I'm doing right here. I'm sharing not to create some kind of cult living of being off the grid and being a homesteader and being self-reliant, being a smart one. Ask yourself what your limitations are first. What can you do and what can't you do? And then buy accordingly. And also, if you buy something off the grid and you're just building a shack or whatever and stuff, there is the fact of, is it a good investment? Could you resell the property for what you put into it? If you just put a shack on it and live on a 400 square foot home on it, it may not really bring the value up very much at all. And then it's going to be only unique people that want to buy it in the future. Because what, what feels right right now could be totally different five years from now. 
if you don't believe me, just look at this COVID thing. I mean, look at the way our life was six months ago and look at it now. Uh, that changed pretty quick. Suddenly, if you had kids, do you want to still have abilities to use the schools if they open up again? Is homeschooling through the public schools still the most practical way to for you? Or do you want to do homeschooling under like uh, the Freedom Project? Um, where you have to pay, you know, it costs a lot of money and people can't afford that stuff. So having kids really is a big factor. Uh, people's health is a factor if you want to come. I have relatives and friends that health-wise could not do what I'm doing. They want to, they'd like to, they think they could, but they can't. And uh, boy, sometimes me and Sherry wonder with the sore muscles and aches and pains, is like, ugh. This is not as easy as it was 20, 30 years ago. So anyway, my point is, be realistic. I do recommend it. I am, I recommend and I am concerned about our future. Uh, I have, oh, I have worries about the economy. I have worried, worries about food. And I have worries about our politics and our freedoms. Uh, self-defense I worry about all of it all of those I don't worry but I'm concerned about it and I have a Christian aspect on this too the book I read is telling me these things were going to happen and, and according to that it's going to get worse but it's actually a glorious time it's a great time to live because we're all witnessing something amazing I'll just leave it to that but the amazing hard part is, is our lives are going to be difficult. So do you embrace it? Or do you just go with the flow and be a lemming? Uh, that's the two main things I'm seeing. Is, is I'm seeing followers, the PC movements, whatever you want to call it. And they're just like little lemmings, I call them. And then you see the other people saying, ooh, history's replaying itself. I'm telling you. If you took the time to go on YouTube and ask, your, and ask information about the last depression, so put in 1929, uh, 1930 depression, and, and watch some documentaries, and then you'll be amazed. History is replaying itself. All the things that happened back then, money got tight, uh, depression hit, it affected other countries, other countries started doing crazy things like socialism and fascism, fascism and, and uh, dictatorships and uh, going liberal, going, uh, wanting more government programs. Doesn't that sound familiar? So this is nothing new. All you have to do is, I know everybody's trying to get rid of our history books. Our history books will tell you exactly what's going to happen. And the Bible too. But anyway, I'll just leave it at that. But... Some of you get it. Some of you guys are getting the idea that we need to, you need to make some changes. You want to get away from the city. You want to be safe. You want your fa family to be safe. I, I get it. But to go all out, out in the boonies, um, to be off the grid, is that really realistic in this day and age? And how are you going to make money? Yes, there's ways to make money. The YouTube channel stuff. Uh, selling your poultry, selling your eggs, uh, doing things with sheep and not uh, goats and pigs and cows. A lot of, and the other thing you gotta check with your property is what you're allowed to do. Where we are at, we can have chickens, ducks, uh, goats and sheep. Um, we cannot have pigs, and we can't have cows. And tell you the truth, I don't want them. I love them, so I'd rather do co-ops. I have farms all around me. So, once again, work with your community. I am showing you example. I already just told you. I made a deal with a local farmer uh, over in Prineville and bought, bought in on a co-op beef. And they have to raise it. They put it on their seven acres. They have to butcher it. They have to do all that stuff. I don't want to. Nor am I allowed to. My ordinance says we can't have that kind of animal. We can have horses here, but we can't have cows. I'm not quite sure why. 
but uh, that's okay. I don't mind. And I don't want to deal with pigs because they tear up your ground. And yes, there's ways to utilize those animals to make your ground and your gardens and your fields and your uh, uh, pastures better. But I don't have, I'm not adjusting roads. I'm not going to be out here moving tractors every day. So uh, uh, if I was 20 years younger, eh, probably. <laughs> but uh, I may take these chickens and do a little bit of tractoring in some of these lawns I have back here because they could use a little bit of churn up and a little bit of a additional poop them. <laughs> Chicken poop. <laughs> anyway, but uh, but I'll never do as hardcore as that. Um, and it's part of its age. And two is, uh, uh, I, if I was going to do all those other animals, I'd want to do the full balance of them. And I can't have cows and I can't have pigs. And both of those can do great things for your land <clears throat> if you rotate them. I don't have that ability here. And that's okay. I knew that when I bought the place. And that's what you need to know. Is it realistic that you want to really raise pigs? Is it really realistic that you want to take care of cows? There's a lot of responsibility that comes with all those. Do you want to milk your own cow? Really? Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Don't get the wrong idea that this video at all. Nothing wrong with that stuff at all. Um... But you got to ask yourself, if that is that the realistic way that you want to go with homesteading and being self-reliant? And uh, is it faster to prep up by buying and learning how to can and learning how to vacuum seal and dehydrate food? You'd be amazed how much food you can get put away by just learning those skills. So focus on that instead of moving a chicken tractor every day. Focus on that before worrying about electric fences and, and pigs and all that stuff and butchering. Um, if you have a co-op around you and other farmers, utilize what they can do and then trade. Um, if times got tough, I'll focus on tomatoes and my son, who's got property here, can focus on zucchini. And I could focus on beans and they could focus on carrots. And we just over overgrow those things and trade. That's awesome. So I, I, I'm really hoping that this talk we're having, and I know it's no fancy pictures, no, uh, no music, no nothing. It's just us, you and I, talking. And I love to see in your discussions uh, your ideas uh, thinking maybe I'm not being realistic. Uh, maybe I should go out and buy 20 acres and 50,000 feet and have dirt roads to get to it. Um, is that really going to be realistic? Because you know, if shit hits the fan, the city folks will go to the suburbs. Then the, after that resources are taken, the suburbs will start coming out here. I need a community to defend this place. I can't be a lone wolf up in a mountain in a cabin trying to defend things because that's a losing situation. You will need communities. You will need to trade. Um, and, and there's so many other things we haven't talked about here. What are you doing for money and saving money? Are you going out and buying gold and silver? Well, that's all fine and dandy, but if times got tough and somebody wanted to trade silver for some of my eggs, I'd probably say no because what the hell am I going to do with silver? Uh, if the guy sell, you know, has 10 pounds worth of uh, zucchinis, I might trade for that instead, or bullets. So, I mean, it's a, it's a paradigm shift. And you have to ask yourself, what would it really be like if we had hard times? So many of you younger folks have never seen hard times. I've barely seen hard times. And I'm in my almost 60. So you've been very fortunate. But our parents, however, thank goodness, never stop reminding us how hard they had it. And then if you do some, if you need to find out what it was like, YouTube is magical. Find out what it was like during the war. Find out what it was like during the depression. Find out how people lived. Find out how they made it. You may be faced with that and you're going to be in a big shock, a world of hurt. If you don't get past this PC living and worrying about 
I'm personally offended. You won't be saying I'm personally offended when you're cold and hungry. You'll be glad you got anything. So I hope this has been a good talk. I would like to do discussions more like this. Uh, uh, Sherry and I are probably going to look at the future of doing some uh, live streams and question and answers. In the meantime, you can look forward to us building a compost pile, learning how to make our compost pile work fast. Uh, we'll be putting in high towers for tomatoes. We're going to be preparing our garden, even though we're not planning a garden this year because we just bought this place. We're going to prepare the ground and the garden before winter and then do a cover over it for the whole winter. And then when we're ready, we'll just churn it up one more time. So we're going to be buying a new rototiller. I already have a tractor. And we'll be showing you what we're doing to prepare our ground this year, putting in our water systems, have everything ready. So when spring comes, we have a greenhouse already. We call it the green room. But we will be actually probably building an actual greenhouse here too. Um, so we got lots of projects going on here. And why? In case what ifs happen. What if the power goes out? What if food gets too expensive to buy? Can I feed ourselves? And can my children get food from us if they needed it or need a place to stay? Because money's going to get crazy. Inflation's going to get crazy. Uh, home mortgages. Uh, there's going to be some tough times coming. That's my prediction. How it's going to look, I don't know. I didn't expect this. Um, anyway, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it hasn't been too long. I hope it makes you think about this kind of stuff. And I'd love to see your comments below of what you're thinking about. Are you thinking about this kind of living? Are you thinking about getting away? Do you have a career and kids and all that stuff? All those things you're concerned. I truly understand those. So down below, share your ideas, share your stories, share your wishes, share what you'd like to do in the future, what your concerns are. Be professional to each other and share information with each other in that description area. So I want to thank you very much for listening. Thank you for your patience. Please join our family. Please subscribe. Like our videos. Liking is really important. And then the other thing, share our videos so we can get more, build this channel up because that helps us just like it will help you if you decide to do this in the future. We got to help each other. We are a community. So thanks again, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.